The next thing we need to take a look at is our piping and our duct systems. These are system families that determine the systems for the components within our projects, such as VAVs and other equipment. Let's take a look at our system types first. First off, we have what they call system classification. It is the classification that the duct or pipe system will fall under. For example, our hydronic return or supply or exhaust air and return air. System types. These are the new systems that we can create within our Revit file using the system classification, chilled or heating water. Keeping in mind that system classification cannot be adjusted. That is where we get our new system types from. When creating a new system type, we need to make sure it matches the system classifications. For example, if we make a new lab or grease exhaust, it has to be within the grease classification so our calculations and our flows will work correctly within the program. So let's go ahead and we're going to come over here. Let's go, we'll minimize all of our views. As you can see, as we scroll down our project browser, we can see our duct systems and our piping systems. We've got exhaust, return, and supply. These are the classification systems. And now we have our hydronic return. Right click and click type properties. Let's go ahead and we'll duplicate this. We want to duplicate this and we're going to call this chilled water return. We want to do this when we send out construction documents. We will be able to tag these using filters that we will set up later as well as using the abbreviations in our tags. So I like to keep hydronic there to group everything together so it's all there by discipline in our project browser. Let's go ahead and click on graphic overrides. We can adjust the line weights if we want to. Go ahead and we can choose a different color. I choose a different color for all my different systems. That way it's easily readable by anybody that's working within the program. We can also assign a new line type or pattern for our lines that we're going to be using for our piping. We're going to leave it at no override for now. Hit OK. Next, we can do is assign a material to our new system. Go ahead and click on the radial button. As you can see, we got everything in here that comes standard, or we can duplicate these and add new ones. For now, we'll just hit cancel. Next, we can apply calculations. We can go flow, none, or performance. We'll go ahead and just leave that on all. Our fluid type, we can decide if we, what kind of glycol we want to use. Just leave that at water for now. Next, we can decide on the fluid temperature. We can go all the way up to 220, down to 30 degrees. We'll just leave it at 50 for this example. The next thing we need to add, do is add an abbreviation in here, CHWR. This is where our tag will get the abbreviation from when we start tagging it at a later date. But next, we can adjust our two line drop symbol and our single line drop symbol. We'll change that to be just a plain outline. As you can see, we've got a number of different fields we can select from. Go ahead and OK. And as I said, we can adjust the single lines as well. So now, as we can see, let's come up here and type in PI. Go over to Properties. And let's go ahead and change our, keep our system type on hydronic return. This is the one that comes standard out of the box. We'll draw a pipe run there. So now when we tag it, you can see it says four inch, but we don't know if that's a four inch domestic line, hydronic line, what that's going to be. So let's go ahead and we'll draw a new set of pipes. Type in PI and from our system type, let's go ahead and select our new hydronic piping, our new hydronic piping system. As you can see, the color is different. That's easy for somebody that's working in the Revit file to see. And then when we go ahead and we tag it, we can see we now have a new four inch diameter chilled water return. Like I stated, we create our new systems within here so we can separate out the different glycol systems, the different domestic systems. So when we look at our system type and our abbreviation, there's our abbreviation, the system name, keeping in mind again that when you create a new system type, if you put it under return, it must match the system classification of hydronic return. Let's go ahead and go back to our proper project browser. Let's go up and we'll take a look at our ductwork here. Flip to a new window. As you can see, we've got three duct runs here. 
but we don't have any way of knowing what kind of duct runs they are. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our properties. Oh, no, back to our project, yeah. Properties, click on that, and from the system type in our properties, we can see that it's a mechanical supply error, but we don't have a system abbreviation applied to it. So let's go back to our project browser. Let's go ahead and we will right click on our supply error and go type properties. We will go ahead and hit rename on this. Let's call this supply air low pressure. This is going to be anything downstream of a VAV box or any kind of air terminal that's going to be regulating the flow in the air. So again, we can adjust the graphic overrides like we did with our piping systems, giving it a new pattern. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Again, we can apply a new material for our system. We'll hit Cancel. Calculations, same as our piping. Thing we need to take a look at is we can also adjust our rise and drop symbol. Let's go ahead and we'll check cross field. Hit OK. So oh, we need to give this an abbreviation. So we'll go SALP for supply air low pressure. Your terminology may be different within your own office. So now you can see we've got a 12 by 12 supply air low pressure system. We would do the same thing for medium pressure, kitchen exhaust, grease exhaust, whatever other kind of duct systems that we needed to create. So, and that's going to be the same for the rest of your systems that we are showing here presently.